some great things and uh, to share with us and show us even. We've got some videos here in this, this one as well. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Uh, as we get started, Michelle Jensen is offered to say the opening prayer. And then I know maku has got some uh, announcements from IPSO. And so we'll go there and see if there's any other announcements after that. So Michelle, uh, please offer the prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we're so grateful to meet together today as sons and daughters of thee and to learn about um, the field that we are in and how that can be used to serve in thy kingdom. We pray that thou will bless us with thy spirit of guidance and learning. We are grateful for our speaker and uh, we pray that thou will bless him, that he will be able to present things that he's prepared uh, appropriately and um, effectively to us. We love thee very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Maku? Yes, so I've got uh, three announcements today for IPSO. Uh, so number one, today, right after uh, seminar, as always, we're having our post-seminar hangout. And what we're doing today is we're going to be uh, having a few different people who have completed projects and they will be available for those of you who are enrolled in seminar as a course. If you need someone to talk about, uh, about the project they completed for an assignment in this course, um, feel free to stick around for that and we'll pair you up with someone uh, so you can talk to them and get that taken care of. Uh, so that will be today. Um, and then uh, uh, announcement number two is that we have the uh, elections for next year's IPSO president coming up pretty soon here. Um, so we're going, to, so how that works is we're going to elect the person who serves as president next year and they will oversee elections in the fall when, uh, when everyone else for all the other positions on IPSO get elected. Um, but if you uh, would be interested in running for IPSO president or if you know someone who you think would make a good IPSO president for next year, uh, then please nominate them. I will be sending out the nomination form later today and you can nominate anyone that you think would be good or you can nominate yourself if you would like to serve in that position. So that's now announcement number two. And then announcement number three is uh, coming up at the end of the month, we're having a, a Zoom activity on the evening of uh, March 25th. We're gonna have a virtual escape room. I sent out a survey a couple days ago wanting to get some potential feedback on themes and times for that. If you could respond to that survey no later than tomorrow, that'd be great. I would, if you haven't seen it, just double check your inbox. But anyway, sorry for the load of announcements today, but that's it and I will see uh, people afterward at the Hangout. Thank you, Maku. Um, the only real thing I wanna emphasize, if you need to stay for that project uh, to get a, a sense of you know, how people have done their projects, please take advantage of the opportunity IPSO is providing. Um, just looking over Canvas, I know that most of you have not done that yet, and this is just a great chance. Also, there's gonna be a lot of defenses you know, over the next month. It's, uh, they're gonna start coming fairly frequently now. I, I know a lot of them are being planned and so you're gonna see more announcements coming out of defenses that you can attend before the semester is over. Um, I'm not aware of any other announcements. Is there anything else that anyone has? Okay, then I will turn the balance of our time to our presenter today, Tyler Harris, who uh, works for the Publishing Services Department of the church. Uh, he's a film producer for the church. Uh, you have seen Tyler's work uh, in some fashion. I am uh, fairly confident of that. If, you, if you've seen the you know, things that the church has been putting out in video form over the last decade-ish or, or a little more, uh, I know you've seen Tyler's work. He's a talented producer, a good friend of mine, and so grateful that he's uh, agreed to come and share some of his insights and the things he's learned, as well as share some of the things that he's made uh, with the church. So uh, please join me in welcoming Tyler Harris to our seminar today. And Tyler, I'll turn the time now over to you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, um, I, I really appreciate that. It's, uh, I, it's been a long time since I've said Dr. McDonald, but uh, that's exactly what it is. And I, I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. And uh, we had a great time together when uh, uh, Jason was working with us over at the church. And we were, were sad to see him go. Uh, so I'm really glad they can invite me back to kind of sh um, share some things. Um, I'm going to start right off here. Um, I, I don't know if I need to do a lot of biographical background or anything. So just that I'm a producer and um, I, I hope that most of you got um, the uh, homework assignment uh, that was kind of a video that we sent out because uh, that's what we're gonna be spending most of our time on um, is we're, we're talking um, about, um, um, and let me see if I, let me, let me start sharing my slide presentation right now so I can get this going. Um, Hold on here, we had this before. Okay, all right. And 
Here we go. All right. So this should be sharing for everyone, I hope. So we're, we're talking about achieving authenticity in global training films. Um, so I, what I sent you out was a video that was the behind the scenes of what we call the uh, leadership training library, uh, which was basically um, hundreds of videos on um, the handbook of the church's official handbook. Uh, not the current one, but this was a few years ago. And um, the thing that kept coming back with this is, you know, this, this looks real, you know, this is very authentic, you know, these just look like real leaders of the church doing their job um, all around the world. And, and it's, it's a very visual, uh, powerful example of how to lead um, in, the, in the Savior's way and to minister. And, and that's just exactly what happened. And I, I just kind of want to go through with you and kind of um, walk through how we, um, how we tried to accomplish this the best that we could and probably made it a little different than some of the training films that even I've made before um, or training films that maybe you've had to sit through that you thought were excru excru excruciating <laughs> um, or very, very scripted or methodical. Uh, and this one was a little bit different. And uh, I just wanted to kind of go through how we did this. Um, basically, um, I, I had, you guys are obviously a very sharp group. Uh, I had a lot of responses come back um, from the video that I sent out. I just wanted to read a couple of them because they're really good. Uh, one of them was um, just the relationship between the people that were being filmed uh, in these training films and then the crews that were actually filming uh, these leaders of the church. And, uh, I, I sat. I just asked what what they what you thought about that. Uh, one in, one person indicated that uh, they were interested in the people they were working with. They didn't see themselves as separate from from them, as as people who were just filling spaces in a video, but as people they cared about. Such an attitude could prom promote unity, understanding, and love, which would help everyone want to work together to produce that best the best product that they could. Um, I love that response. Uh, that person should be teaching the class, honestly. I mean, this is this is the actual, um, this is this is exactly what um, this was trying to accomplish. Is is that uh, a lot of times when we see a training video, um, and and it's okay. I mean, there's all kinds of different videos, but it needs to be scripted. We have actors. They come in. They do their part. Uh, it's it, it's it's made to get a certain. Um, um, you know, to get something that we need to get at the end um, of an action item out of a training video, and it's very methodical. Um, this was, there was just no us and them. There was no crew and, and above the line and below the line. It was all something that was just organically happening together. So I love that response. Thanks a lot. Um, then I wanted to throw you kind of a wrench in there too and kind of talk about these white shirts and ties that we wore. That, that was more fun uh, of one because I got a lot of different responses about that. Um, the answer is no, we don't always wear white shirts and ties um, out on our productions. Um, this one we decided to, and I'm going to leave that to, to later in, in, the, in our uh, discussion to talk about that one a little bit more of why we deliberately decided to do that. Um, but I got some good, good responses. And I want to read those too. Um, he said, one said, um, I'm assuming that this would have helped everyone feel important, the importance of the filming. It also could have helped with the focus. Um, both of these things would have invited the spirit into the filming, which it did. It was very good. Another one that was just simple and elegant was it demonstrates equality, camaraderie, and trustworthiness. And that was really important to, that we needed to really gain the, the trust of the people um, that we were filming, the leaders, and have respect for them and to be able to really understand that this was something that they were, that was sensitive and spiritual and, and deep, um, that they had, um, that they felt deeply about and that they wanted to share and help others around the world. And it was really important in this type of filming. Um, so I, I want us, as, as, we, as we kind of go through this exercise and I kind of explain some of the things, uh, one thing that I wanted to point out was um, that auth authenticity um, really is just about being is about being flexible and and flexity, um, flexity, <laughs> flexibility. So being flexible uh, is really about three things that I kind of boiled it down to. It's really about your personal attitude, um, your ability to adapt and to adapt very quickly in a lot of different situations, 
and then your willingness to change. Um, and, and, and with that, I, I wanted to show you just some of the productions and the things that I've done um, that may be very different to what um, I showed you in my example. Um, so I've worked for the church for 20 years. That's a long time. Um, I, I, I think uh, students, I, I just want you to know that uh, that's probably maybe not the suggested path I would maybe even suggest for you, unless it may be at the church, um, especially in media. Media is something that you need to have a lot of different experiences in to really kind of, if you're wanting to get to a producer type role where you really want to learn and know a lot about um, what you're doing, you need to have a, a lot of different uh, uh, diff different disciplines and things that you need to learn from possibly going to different companies and going around to different places. Um, luckily at the church for me, um, the church is very actively and you need to aggressively take these opportunities to do training experiences. They're very generous. Uh, this one was called the main media work workshops. And for about like five different years, this was like an intensive week um, uh, concentrated workshop where you'd go out and learn directing or um, you, you would learn how to do um, editing or sound or lighting or graphics, all kinds of disciplines that you would use um, in filmmaking. And, the tr and the, these were very expensive workshops. It was started on a Saturday, ended on another Saturday. I love their philosophy. If by Wednesday you're not completely frustrated by what you're creating, because they kind of give you cameras or whatever, you'd create something and you'd have a big party at the end where you'd show all of your work. And it says, like, if by Wednesday you're, you're not completely frustrated with what you're making, and you're just doing the same thing you're doing at work, you're doing it completely wrong because you're, you're wasting your money. You need to do it something in a completely different way. And that's really how the whole leadership training library was. So um, other things that I've really, this is just more pictures from, they give you actors and all kinds of different things to go through and do. Um, the LDS Film Festival is another easy thing to do that just takes 24 hours. They give you a topic, you can only use five people, and you can quickly turn around a film. And just, it's just something to kind of keep that edge sharp that as you're kind of like working on projects and things. And we did, I've done I think three or four of these, um, several different projects. We kind of just get a group together, kind of do something that's completely different from what you're doing at the church, just to kind of keep that edge sharp and do things. Um, currently, I'm doing um, a video podcast, um, uh, doing some other freelance work. I'm always trying to work on something different um, so that you're always trying to get that variety. Um, some of the things that um, I've worked on in, in, in the church, just to kind of show you some of my background. Um, I love this picture. I don't know if you can see my little cursor here. This guy's completely frustrated because of the humidity that made his camera not work as we stepped off the plane in Indonesia. But uh, kind of my first things I did as a producer was um, newsroom. And we go around to different areas this is in Indonesia, where it was like there was um, earthquakes and things. We saw a lot of sad things, but uh, you kind of document those for the church. It was called, back then it was the World Report. They still actually show this, but it's more online. Uh, back then it was between conference and, and during between, um, on the satellite between the uh, morning and afternoon session. Um, so we, we go to a lot of different places. Here's Louisiana, it's a big hurricane. Uh, President Nelson was there to give a, a large sum of money to a local food bank there in Louisiana. And um, we do a lot of temple open houses. Um, we, we used to film like every open house as it was an individual special open house, which they are very special. Um, then they figured out it was easier to do templates because it was costing a lot of money to do an individual uh, open house as President Hinckley got so many temples that were going. Um, some more shots of just us doing some open houses. Here's some training videos. As you can see, I'm definitely not in a white shirt and tie and a much, much younger Tyler there. That's uh, so like my, one of my first training videos, actually. Um, um, here, here I want, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but this, this is a training video, and it's very much about the beauty and aesthetic of the shot, and really not so much about what this good gentleman is having to say. And we'll talk about that more, which uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, going on in my career um, about some ways to handle things. Some more production. 
Um, this one is, I think, interesting. I think this helps lead a little bit more into the leadership training library. Uh, this is where, <clears throat> where I was less of a producer or a director, but more, we needed to have very small teams. It was called Capture the Ministry. And we would go out with apostles to wherever their assignment was. And with, um, it was usually a, a one person team with your camera, your audio and everything. And just documenting that they were, they were just getting so many times when we would refer to apostles, it was just a shot behind the pulpit. And they really wanted to get out and see, okay, well, what do they really do? And how do they minister uh, with the people? Here's President Uchtdorf with the Rome Temple. And uh, here's <clears throat> the Elder Christofferson. Is he coming up on Mars Hill in Greece where Paul taught in ancient times? Um, there's Acropolis. Uh, there's some sisters in Cambodia. Sister Esplan and Sister Mariette uh, from the uh, um, young women and and uh, and primary pr um, presidency auxiliaries. Um, uh, also, I mean, we do really large productions. I'm sure you've seen some of these, like Prophet, uh, like Joseph, uh, Prophet of the Restoration, and we took a whole, uh, like, took a whole city. I think just I, th I think Jason was maybe at the MPS during this time, uh, the Motion Picture Studio when we did this production. But we'd go up to Canada Village, which was up in Canada, and we took a whole city just about to film this. It was a different type of production, and and I, I was not the director producer. That was uh, T. C. Christensen, as you can see him here. I was the behind the scenes um, uh, producer on this, um, and uh, so helping out with with some of these things. I was also an extra, which I wish I still had that wig. It would be nice, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, we, we had other, other times we have our own motion picture studio. I'm sure some of you have seen this uh, down at, in Provo uh, where you can do all kinds of things and make just about anything look like anything, bring in animals and uh, handlers and wranglers and what have you and do all kinds of setups and lots of fun things, pump in all kinds of atmosphere and dust and make it look all kinds of antique shop shots and everything. Here, here's one where I actually did get to work on with uh, T.C. Christensen and, and he really gave me a lot of ideas. He says, Tyler, if you're gonna make something look like 1950, you need to bring in some 1950s cars. And so we got some car people to bring some cars in and do some stuff. And, and it really made the shoot look a little bit more um, authentic. Um, here's some, I'm doing a lot of broadcasts now um, recently. This is one of our last big broadcasts before kind of COVID hit. It was a face-to-face -face broadcast um, outside in Nauvoo. Um, so our product, inside our production truck with our different angles and outside with our audience and um, big events in the conference center. Of course, we don't really do those. It's a Latino event that I produce each year. Um, that's a real fun one. The audience really likes this. Um, kind of fill the conference center. It really gets loud in there. Um, and then now it's kind of uh, everyone wears a mask and we have no audiences and we sit in front of a camera and this is the worldwide devotional. This, uh, the young adults this January that we did with Elder Gong. Um, but uh, this is a lot, this looks a lot more, a lot of Zoom meetings. Well, that's they do seem to do a lot of Zoom meetings. There's Zoom meetings to young adults here. The other gong again. Social media on phones. They they just go. They all they all have their own accounts now. All the apostles do. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm sure you're aware of this. And this is a lot of things just done on an iPhone. Um, another broadcast with Elder Anderson where he spoke in French um, to a young adult audience. We did this year. Um, President Oaks and. Elder Christofferson. Um, so those are some of the things. I, I just wanted to kind of give you just a little bit of background of what we do as a producer. That, so as we kind of get into more of what um, the training videos were, you can kind of see where I really needed to take a big departure from what I'd been taught by very talented people um, that, that helped me learn all of these years through production to what I really needed to accomplish um, by kind of almost divorcing myself from some of the typical ways that we do production uh, to finding a way to uh, kind of getting out of the way and letting those that were um, the leaders be able to tell their own stories. Um, so I, I wanted to, to kind of give you the evolution of our, our training videos and how this kind of came to be. 
um, cause it, cause it's really kind of important. Um, the, um, I know a lot of you have probably been on missions or around the world or traveled. And if you've gone to churches, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people, they might bear in their testimony or something like that is, oh, the church is the same all around the world. You know, as we go there, you know, that it's the same, you know, we do the same, you know, everything we see in a church building is always the same. You know, now it looks probably really different with COVID, but back then we really said that it's like you went there and it's just everything kind of seemed the same. It's different language, different cultures, but the church really was about the same. And, and this is because of our great handbooks, right? Well, no, not really. Um, in, in fact, um, the, the handbooks are great. They're there and they, they give us the direction of what we can do. But uh, as we worked on this project and started working on it with President Oaks, he said, he said you know, the President Oaks, was then Elder Oaks, he said, he said really, he said, uh, if the church really wanted to hide deep, dark secrets somewhere, they'd put them in the church handbook. That's where they would put them because that's no one opens up the handbook to read it. So that's what he told us. So I thought it was funny. Um, but um, anyhow, um, so literally what was happening is general authorities, as they were traveling around the area about 10 years ago, they would find things in the handbook that would say, okay, this is opening exercises. So they would find people doing jumping jacks before they would start the Relief Society class or something. And, and you know, this was true in, in, some, in some areas. And so that we're like, we're like, something's not getting through here. We're not, we're not, you know, we're not, not helping make this a global church and to make this through because, you know, obviously we don't really want to have people doing jumping jacks before we start the lesson. Um, so th th there was some real need for course correction. And so this is the time when actually Elder um, Oaks went out to the Philippines and basically was there as the area president and apostle to help some things for a few years. And Elder Holland went to um, Chile. And, and those were some kind of some areas where we had large populations of members. There were so many people being baptized and, um, and but just not a lot of priesthood um, longtime leadership. And so they needed some help. So what, what they found out is Elder uh, Oaks and the area, they came up with these DVDs and this is the the first kind of dvd they did the training dvds for the philippines and they were um they were actually really good they were really successful um and they would this is how they distributed things before the internet actually if you've seen a dvd before you know there's no more blockbusters but that's really how it was done and uh and so these these dvds were were how they, they got things out and they would distribute these and they were and they became um, really quite quite popular. In fact, um, um, people would use these DVDs and and they were so popular there that they would start um, translating them and they would so their different areas would then be like, oh, we want to use these in uh, South America. So we'll translate these into Spanish and then we want to use these in other places. And and ultimately it got it got kind of out of hand to where like and it wasn't really working culturally. Um, so it, it was it was like we need to find kind of a one one fit one fix solution for everyone to make some type of training video. Um, and I, I want I want to show you kind of uh, just an example of one of these training videos. So th this was like it was it would appear to be super big budget. What we found out later is that actually you can get really big crews in the Philippines uh, for not a lot of money, um, at least American dollar money. Um, but, uh, they, they would, I mean, they had, they had super big crews there and they would come and they would film these. And I think it was like 20 DVDs that they produced over several years. Um, and it was, it was, it was kind of for them, it was a really big, big production, um, to do. And, and they had, you know, everyone kind of there, um, this, this here, these, uh, th this sister here on the left was in the area and she was the producer. Um, for a lot of these DVDs. Um, but, but it's hard, as you can see, with so much going on here. And then you can see way back in the background, the, the talent or the actors or what they would be, what they're supposed to be as church members. But it's really hard to direct them to do what really touches the audience in a training video like this. And let me, let me just give you a, an example of one of these. I'm gonna have to skip through it because <laughs> the introduction is so long that I want, I want not to skip around the video a little bit, but let me give you an example 
what one of these videos look like. Can everybody see that? Is that working? Yes. All right. I don't know if you've seen Lawrence of Arabia, but it was okay to do like a 30 minute, like a guy walking down a sand dune. And this is kind of, I think the idea that they had here. Um, so very, very cinematic, very long. Let me kind of skip ahead here so we can kind of see some of the actual training part. Okay, here we go. Hi, Eva. You have such a pretty smile. See you at church tomorrow, Eva. Eva, Eva, did you eat your breakfast? Of course I did, Father. You make very delicious rice cakes. Oh, look at you. You look so much like your mother. <laughs> Let's go. We don't want to be late for church. Your mother was always early for church. If she were alive, she'd be happy to see you following her example. Okay, so um, I just I just wanted to show you that, and that's okay if you had a little bit of a chuckle there. Uh, I did when I when I saw it. That that line kind of gets to me is is just like, well, if your mother were alive, she would have loved to see this. But uh, anyway, uh, so I mean, they were very scripted, um, and they were kind of just very methodical, um, very deliberate. Um, but, but again, they 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 really helped out. This was something that they were able to do um, in countries that um, you know maybe literacy was a little bit lower. Um, they really needed to see examples. They, they hadn't seen the church before. These were brand new members. They, don't, they didn't know what things were like. And um, that was just an example of getting ready for church. It then goes to her class and everything else. I, I just don't have the time to, to show everything there. But uh, the, in the end, the, the videos were a great start. There was something that was really something that worked. Um, but uh, it just it wasn't able to really get the spirit of things. It was really able to kind of tell, okay, this is exactly how you do things, but it wasn't really able to convey any spirit um, to the audience. Um, what, what started to happen actually is they started to mass produce these and then put it into different languages and things is that um, you would then see a Relief Society uh, training video from the Philippines and it had, it had like, a, like a doily on the tablecloth and it had like some flowers in like a vase with just one rose coming out and then a picture of Christ. And then you'd see this like all over the world, like they would start imitating this in different places because, hey, that's how the videos did it. This is what we need to do. Um, and so that, that started to become a little bit of a problem that we're not really trying to say, hey, this is exactly how you do it. This is the spirit. We wanted to figure out how the spirit of how you did it. So. Um, the priesthood department at this time was kind of um, was kind of uh, given the the assignment to okay um, and at the time it was like I think it was like uh, Elder Craig C Christensen and it was Elder Oaks I think over him or something like that they said we need to figure out a way to to broaden this to figure out a new handbook was coming out too at the time I remember and uh, it wasn't even printed we were just given like little pages of it and things. But before then, they were, they were told, okay, we need to figure out how you can make all of these videos. Um, and then I was asked, and this is just how you are as a producer, you just are asked to do different assignments. And the priesthood department approached me to do their, well, at the time was called Strength of Youth, which is just our theme, the theme for youth. We do them every year. They're still done today. There was, or, uh, there was a, a theme this year. Um, and, um, and so we went out to different places and they said, now we want you to go all around the world, get different youth. And, and they gave us like all of these crazy, we thought were crazy ideas. We're like, we want you to kind of organically engage youth in discussions and get their deep testimonies and things. And, and uh, it's, just, it's just you and a camera guy. And you know, you'll need to do all the audio and you'll need to conduct the discussion. And, and we don't want anything on a tripod and you want to be really loose. And we're like, oh, okay, well, you know, and 
I was pretty young and I'm like, okay, we'll try it. You know, we'll try to do these things. And so, so we got there and we would go to these different conferences and it always kind of, so this is, this is one I think in Germany and, and we would start there and what we saw was a lot of like, um, uh, you know, it was just well, kids having fun at these FSY uh, conferences, these for strength of youth and they'd be, you know, dancing, having fun, you know, we'd be there in the same dorms they were with all of the, um, counselors and everything and and everyone's just kind of together and we thought we were building this kind of camaraderie and um and when we would get to the youth great youth obviously good good kids and we would get to these interviews we really just became kind of uh kind of strangers asking them questions and what we get was a lot of uh primary answers and you know and it what it wasn't we were just getting really frustrated we're just like we're not getting the priesthood department what they want at all and we had no idea at this whole time we were really just guinea pigs for them and we were doing a product but but we were kind of a guinea pig for how they could be figure out this more robust leadership training library that they knew was in the wings and so so finally we kind of decided okay the conferences are good we can get a few testimonies and you're going to get a few kids that are doing really well but what would really be nice is if we could really from the kids that were great if we could get on the bus because they probably don't live too far away extend the trip get on the bus and then really get to know them better and and figure out okay um we want to see these these kids these youth in their home areas going to church doing things like they would really do um and and seeing what their testimony was an extension of that but showing that um in their hometown and so we, we'd kind of get on this bus, which going back into basically the same area with these kids, because it kind of come in from all different directions to go to these big conferences. And, and we would just, we started first filming everyone on the bus and it was just, it was kind of chaotic, but as we'd kind of sit down on these long two or three hour even bus rides, uh, we just started to, to talk and just talk with the youth and, and, um, which was sometimes difficult because I didn't speak German. We had translators or it was in Spanish, it was a little bit easier, but uh, we, we just really tried to just say, hey, you know, we're just wanna get to know you and what's going on and really just having this kind of like a mission, just kind of a relationship. And, and that, that started something, it was something that we could kind of hold on to. Um, and then we would we'd meet these um, kids on the bus, we'd kind of ask them with their cell phones, hey, do you think you'd call your mom or dad, see if they could, see if we could kind of hang out at their house for a little bit when we get back and, and make a movie about you. And, and it just kind of evolved. It just kind of was a part of being that flex, being able to adapt quickly and being flexible. And, and as we go back, we'd say, okay, well, here's, this is one in England. I think this is Spencer. Uh, I still remember this kid, great kid. Uh, this was his home. And we're like, here's, here's a family night at Spencer's house. And he has, a little brother and an older brother and his grandpa and his grandma lives with them and and you know we're starting to get to know what do you do at family night it, it just kind of evolved and just kind of happened and well what kind of service projects do you do and we film that or what what fun things do you do and he's like well we like to cliff dive and so we go to the uh, this, this place where they're cliff dive and then it got so late at night by the time we were done with these and it wasn't really planned out we're just like well this is a really super small town in, in england and we don't really have a hotel and, we, and our house is full, but we know this neighbor that lets out a room and we can maybe pull some other beds up here. So we, we're kind of like the, the three bear, the, the three bears here. And we had like, we pulled in some extra beds and a mattress and we just kind of stayed there. And that kind of became how we did a lot of these videos is we just kind of stay the night with members or they kick their kids out of the room. And we just, we did this on a lot of them. Um, and, and that's just, kind of how these work. And I, I wanted to show you a little, little video of, what, um, of what, what they felt like when we got done with this project of one of the videos that they really liked. And they're like, this is something that we could kind of start a leadership training library. And, and uh, this was, I don't know if I have time to really tell the whole story. It was really kind of a miracle how we found this, uh, this, uh, this boy, his name was Ernesto. And, um, and they, they just liked how fluid things were. Things weren't just set up and it wasn't all about the shot or about how beautiful the camera work was. It was more about 
connecting with this youth and his family. And, and this, in, in this particular instance, it was this youth, Ernesto, his brother, they were members and the family wasn't members, but they were very affected by the church. And they were, they were very um, happy that their son had such a good influence uh, with the church. And there was this, this particular um, topic happened to be on family. So I'm going to try to show a little video on Ernesto here. Oh, everything went away. Okay, let's see, are we back? Sorry about that. Is it working still? Okay, let's see if I can get this to work. Yo soy Manuel Ernesto Sanabria Munilla. Soy, soy de la Iglesia de Jesucristo de los Santos de los Tumerías. Me gusta mucho la música, me, gust, me gusta caminar mucho, me gusta, me gusta el, muy poco deporte como el voleibol y el básquetbol. Es para nosotros una gran alegría tenerlo, tenerlo como hijo y, y como persona que es él. Esa es mi familia. Él es Manuel Alejandro Sarai Munguía, es mi hermanito menor. Él es muy travieso, le gusta jugar mucho, corretear, brincar, nunca, nunca para. Él es mi padre, Manuel Ernesto Sarai Contreras. Él, él me ayuda mucho lo que son los trabajos. Él, él, también yo he leído de vez en cuando lo que es, es en sus trabajos. Son mis hijos, los amo. Siempre lo, lo he dicho. Si, si Dios, si Dios, Dios ha, ha sido bueno con alguien, es conmigo. Por, por ellos. Ella es mi mamá de Yanira Munguiar. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip ahead here just a little bit. Sorry. So this is when they got baptized. Tanto jóvenes como adultos, como adultos, abrazándonos, besándonos, pues mi corazón estaba inflado. Sí, muy contentos. Y yo estoy muy, muy contenta de que ellos estén dentro de la iglesia y que sigan bautizados, porque tengo una gran tranquilidad de que ellos van a ser hombres de bien, grandes hombres. Para mí es importante que yo, mi familia... Ok, so... Um, the, the thing that I just loved so much about this, it was, it was just so, it was just so real. It was just so transparent. Everything that we did there just happened to be just, it was just one take. It was just, um, and that's what they kind of liked. It was so natural. They thought, well, we could maybe learn something about this for the leadership training libraries. It's just, we just said, Hey, introduce your family. And we kind of did that with everybody. Uh, this one worked a lot better. Uh, but it was just this fact that, he had he had such love for his family his father had love for them well, like any family most families but i mean the way that it was just we weren't looking to have an amazing camera shot we weren't looking i was trying to do the best i could with audio with the the, the boom um just doing the best that i could um but uh it, it just kind of happened organically then we're like well you know they're like well we have a baptism picture and it was just that printed out picture that they had and they held that up and they were just so proud of that and um they, they just we just things just kind of happened um organically and that's that's kind of how um they when they saw that the priesthood department said this is it or ernesto is what we need to do for the leadership training library and so oh man i'm really running out of time I'm sorry. So let me let me just get let me quickly kind of show you. So so let me tell you the difference was with leader with getting up to this point, and I'm gonna show you a video from the leadership training library that I think kind of caps it off and hopefully I can get some more time to talk about it. Um, but basically from the difference between this and the leadership training libraries are like you're kind of retelling a story. What we need you to do is get out of the way and you need to work with the, these leaders 
the crew and everyone else so that everyone's on the same page. So you're always taking this as one take. You're coming into a ward council. You're coming into a ministering visit with Relief Society sisters. You're coming into, you know, whatever it is, and you're just walking in. And that took a lot because we needed to know what that was. And, you know, a lot of these countries were in South Korea or uh, Guatemala or Brazil, you know, languages that I didn't speak. And I needed to know immediately what they were saying so we could keep, keep the whole interaction going. So after they did this, we could say, okay, now we need to do this or this. And we kind of came up with a whole way that we could hear from translators and different things. We needed to make it a little more robust than two people. Um, and I hope I can get into showing that, but I, I want to show you this one more video here um, of how this kind of happened with uh, something that just was completely natural that we filmed on our leadership training library with the primary children. Uh, I think it starts, we can start it a little bit later uh, here. En el caso de los niños Vázquez, Estefan, ¿tú qué nos puedes informar de, de ellos? Eh, los niños realmente eh, tienen el deseo de asistir a la primaria, cumplir, pero muchas veces el motivo por lo que no lo hacen es por sus padres, ¿verdad? El problema es que la presidencia se unió y planeó to visit the Vázquez family that very week. Prior to the visit, the sisters prepared spiritually and pondered about the needs of the children. Hay una escritura en Proverbios 22, 6 que dice, instruye al niño en su camino y aun cuando fuere viejo no se apartará de él. Entonces, si nosotros le enseñamos a ellos el camino recto ahorita, ellos no se van a apartar. Ellos van a adquirir un fuerte testimonio que los va a mantener en los caminos del Señor. Tu mami decía, Cindy, que tú te levantas bien temprano, el domingo para ir a la iglesia. ¿Por qué te gusta ir a la iglesia? Porque... <coughs> Me gusta aprender más eh, de la palabra de Dios y compartir con, con los demás niños. ¿Te a mí? También me gusta leer todo lo de la Biblia, el libro de Mormón. A, mí. Bueno, a veces me pasan a orar, pido por mi familia, por los hermanos, y por todos. Y les agradecemos de veras a ustedes, ¿verdad?, por, por asistir y por el esfuerzo y el deseo que tienen de aprender más acerca de Jesucristo. Later that week, the presidency continued to minister and fellowship the Vasquez children and brought them to an activity day service project. Y mañana pues también los tendremos dentro de la capilla. Y hoy los niños se están relacionando con todos los demás, que es lo que nos interesaba a nosotros, ¿verdad? Que ellos pudieran tener amigos dentro de la iglesia. In a meeting with a member of the bishopric, the presidency discussed their visit with the Vasquez family and the parents' commitment to bring their children to church. The presidency asked Brother Juarez to help them coordinate with other ward leaders in welcoming the family back to church. Entonces, para que ellos también puedan tomar en cuenta en sus reuniones a los hermanos y poderles ayudar para que ellos sientan que realmente son importantes para nosotros y para nuestro Padre Celestial y que nos hacen falta en, dentro de la iglesia del Evangelio, ¿verdad? So, I, I'm going to stop it right there. Um, we're running out of time here. Um, but uh, it was, 
this was just amazing to me. I mean, just to see them just, this is what they did all week. So we went down on a Sunday to the, to the next Sunday. It was almost two weeks um, that would be down there. And this was a family that they'd been praying about and thinking about and preparing for. And uh, this whole family as a family had never been to church. And, and to see them all come back to church like this and just to see them walk in, um, prepare this thing the whole week, to have activities, to follow up, to kind of just go through all of the things. This took the whole week to kind of shoot. We were doing other stories, but, um, and then as this happened, I remember I was like, my cameraman, he like ran out there to the front and he caught everything and they were coming up the drive, the, the, the walk, the, the, uh, the road up to the church and this whole family was, was coming up there. And it was, it was quite emotional. Uh, to see everyone there. Um, and, and this, and there was just many miracles like this in the, uh, in these training videos. And I, I, I really wanted to go through and give you just some, um, some things that we did, but, um, but basically the, what was behind everything was relationships. And then the white shirt thing, I'll get to that really quick is, is that basically the white shirt, it just helped everyone buy in. It was like, you're going to say something important. We want to be here and we want to make this important for you as well. We want to show you how important this is. And it's just little moments like this, showing your kids, you know, and say, hey, I want to show you, this is my kid. She's about your age, you know, or they want to always wanted to take pictures with us and with the crew. Um, here's a different shoot that I did uh, where we weren't in white shirts and ties. And we're ha having someone to bear, you know, kind of just say these sensitive things around the, the temple and, and about, uh, you know, marriage and things like that. Uh, it just sends a different vibe. It's just, here's a man that looks like he's in a tent as we're, as we're trying to get his interview. It looks beautiful, guaranteed. It looks very cinematic. But I have to sit back here on this little case over here, like 10 feet away to interview him. And we're not connected. The crew, myself, you know, they're worried about the best shot and the best audio, and the best light and sun, and this good stake president in South America is worried about talking about his, his, the sensitivity of his feelings and what's happening. There's not connection there. Um, and there's just, there's so much more I could kind of talk about. This is a fun little thing. They made a little claymation of our team that we did in Guatemala. I wanted to show this. Um, this is, um, we, always had a, we always had a sound person, a camera person, and we always had someone that was typing all the notes that they could hear from the translators. I wanted to get into that more, but kind of running out of time. But we did all these tests in Salt Lake before we went there. And we had people that were trying to figure out, okay, how can we see into the room if it's too small? Or how can we take notes and then send these back to get interpreted or have translators so that we could hear in our ears? And a lot of fun technology that was actually brand new that had never been done before. Um, Cameras were never supposed to be on tripods. It was supposed to, as much as possible, it's supposed to be always like you were with there with the people. Um, a lot of our, it was always trying to figure out where we could hide, hide, hide Katie. Um, oh, it was exhausting. We, we would go from literally the crack of dawn to way after midnight and having Meetings, always talking about the members, what we needed to do next. The, the, the gag was to get a picture of someone sleeping literally anywhere. And, and that's just how it was. I don't know if we'd even be allowed to do shoots like this anymore uh, with all of the protocols of the church. Um, but uh, it was something that was amazing. And when everyone bought in, it was an amazing success. Um, and, and that's the end of my presentation, really. I, I, I had a lot more to kind of talk about in between. Um, and I think we're out of time. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Tyler, thank you so much for your insights and your willingness to kind of open up uh, this view into your world here a little bit. So let's thank Tyler for sharing these uh, insights with us. I did see a few questions, Tyler, and so Amy will collect those and, and